Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. Today is the official Mr. Hino's City Shaper points ah! video where you get to find out what everything is worth um, and how you get the missions done. So if you want to see that, stay with me. Okay, so everybody, I'm going to take you around the board and basically show you what the mission is, what it's called, and how do you get the points, and what are the options for the points. So let's go to the table. Come on. All right, everybody, we're starting with mission one here, the elevated places. So I'm going to have to see if you guys can give me some clarification on this. You're going to get 20 points, but this is what I need clarification. It's saying if the robot is supported by the bridge. And I'm, I need clarification if they're considering this part of the bridge or if it needs to be on the level part, this part of the bridge. So I'm going to say 20 points if, that, if that's considered part of the bridge. And then you get 15 points for every flag that you raise. And it's saying at any level. So as long as that got raised, that would be 15 if your robot can somehow get this flag to raise over here, that would be another 15. So there would be 15. If your robot can hit both of them, that'd be cool to do it at the same time. So one more time, 20 points for it being supported by the bridge. You guys let me know if you think that's considered 20 points right there. And then 15 points each for each flag that gets raised. Let's move on. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and take a look at mission number two here, the crane mission. Let me go ahead and break down the three ways you can get points here. The first one is gonna be, uh, as the rule states, um, if it's lowered at any distance from the guide hole. So, um, you know, if it just got lowered halfway, you would get those 20 points. If it's not lowered all the way, it's going to be tough to get those other points. So let's talk about that. So again, if you lower um, this blue unit, you're going to get 20 points. If this blue unit is stacked on top of this lower unit here, oops, let me put that back in. That's going to be 15 points right here. This will be in addition to the 20 that you already got. So this would be 35 right here. And then if this lower blue unit is in this blue circle, that's going to be an added 15. So this right here would be 50 as we see it. Okay, everybody, this is mission three, the inspection drone mission. The inspection drone um, is going to be with you in base. And if your robot can put it on this axle right here on the bridge, that is going to be worth 10 points. Okay, everybody, this is going to be mission four, the design for wildlife mission. This bat is in base, and if your robot can put it on this branch right here, that's going to be worth 10 points. Okay, everybody, this is mission five, the treehouse mission. So they're talking about units here, and they're asking that we place uh, one of these units in the large branches here that would be worth 10 points per unit and if we're putting it up here in the small branches that's going to be 15 points per unit the thing i might need some clarification on is if we use these i'm going to assume that's four units because it's made up of you can see how this is two and this would be two that's what i'm assuming you guys let me know if if i'm getting that wrong so that would be worth, if that's 10 points a unit, this would be 40 points. If it were 15 points, is that 60? You guys need to leave me a comment in the section below. Are we considering this four units? I mean, I don't know. That's, that's what I'm considering a unit because they talk about this being the blue unit, which you can see here, there's two. And there would be two on this side. So unless I get corrected, I'm going to stay with that. 
that this would be considered four units. Four times 15, this would be worth 60 points here if your robot could put it up in the small branches. Down below, this would be worth 40. All right, everybody, let's go to mission six, the traffic jam. Basically, your robot will lift up the traffic jam and it must stay independent on its hinges here. So it'll have to rest like that. And that'll be for 10 points. All right, everybody, we're at mission number seven, the swing. Check her out. She's so excited to go on the swing. Basically, your robot will release this lever to allow her to swing, and that'll be worth 20 points. And you can see the smile on her face. All right, everybody, we're at mission eight here, the elevator. So those of you that are setting this up, it's the blue car, it's supposed to be at the top. So your robot will, if it flips it over, that'll be worth 15. If your robot can somehow get it to be balanced, which I am proving is really tough just with my hand. Come on, Mr. You know, you can do this. That'll be worth 20. But if the tan car is at the top, that is worth 15. All right, everybody, this is mission number nine, the safety factor mission. So we have this test building here being supported um, by these blue beams. So you're gonna get 10 points per blue beam that you can knock out and the rules are stating that it's more than halfway so I guess if you can do the math if these are at 90 degrees I guess you just have to go past 45 so let me kind of go ahead and test so we can knock this one out and it's still supported we can knock that one out and it's still supported let me see if I can come around here so that would be worth 20 points I'm not sure if I can knock out any of these here. Let's test this one. Ooh, and let's see if I can pull this one out. Nope. Okay, so they're asking that it still be supported. And if I knock that one out, obviously that's not. So you're gonna get 10 points for each blue beam that you can knock out more than halfway. All right, everybody, we're at mission 10 here, steel construction. And we wanna make sure that the building lines up with these grid lines here. So this is gonna have your robot lift up the steel construction independent on its hinges, and this will be worth 20 points. All right, everybody, this is mission 11, the innovative architecture mission. So they gave us uh, bag number 10, and it was filled with these white Legos. I think there were some red and gray ones too. Don't know what that is. Um, so what I did is I just made Mr. Hino's creation. And the rules are basically stating as long as it's bigger than one of the blue units that you're good. Obviously you don't wanna make it too big or else it won't fit inside the circle. So they're just saying that other than the blue circle here, we can put this in any circle and that's gonna be worth 15 points. If it's partially in the circle, then it's gonna be worth 10 points. So uh, basically they're telling teams to already have this pre-built. You're not making this during the competition. You're actually having it already built. And you basically decide which circle you wanna put it in. You can put it in here, but you definitely just want to be smart where you put it so that it's not interfering with any of your other missions. So there's quite a few um, circles to choose from. So you can decide if you uh, want to stay close here. Hopefully you've done all your missions over here that you can uh, put it in that one. So again, 15 points if it's completely in the circle, 10 points if it's partially in the circle. Okay, everybody, this is gonna be mission 12, the design and build mission. Let me go ahead and see if I can clearly state this from what I understand. So this mission is all about, if you want the 10 points, this is gonna be about color matching. So here we have this red circle here, and they're gonna basically give you 10 points for each level that you have. So if you were to just put this into this red circle because they're matching the color of the unit, 
this would be worth 20 points because we have one level here and a second level here. So if we're just talking about color matching, that's where we would end up getting the 10 points per level. Now, if we're going to mismatch now, so notice how, let's say your robot put that in there. So we would still get the 20 points. Let me turn this around here. So we would get 10 points for this level, 10 points for this level. So this would still be worth 20. And because this white is mismatched, it's not red, this would only be worth five. So this whole thing here, if we can put this together, this would be worth 25 points. And according to the rules, this doesn't even need to be um, within the circle. This can be partially in and we still get those five points. Now, where it gets a little crazier now is if we start to add stacks to it. So again, this would still be worth 20, this red part here. And because we now would have, let me turn this here so you can see this. So we would have three levels, one, two, three. So this is our 20, and this would be five, 10, 15. So this whole thing would now would be worth 35 points. So again, when we're color matching here, that's when you get the uh, 10 points a level. When it's mismatched, not anything, we're just counting each level as five points per level. All right, everybody, this is mission 13, uh, sustainability. So here we have the roof garden, we have the insulation and the solar panels. So simply put, if we can put any of these sustainability items on top of a stack and put it into either partially or completely in, that's going to be worth 10 points just for this sustainability. So if we were to actually combine this here, we can actually go back to the mission 12. So this would be five points a level. So this would be worth 10. And if we had that on top, that would be an extra 10 for the sustainability mission. So this would actually be worth 20 points right here. Okay, everybody, this is our last mission, mission 14. This is called precision. And these are your six precision tokens. So this is kind of like what they've had before in years past. If your team interrupts the robot out of base, basically the in, before the ref would basically just take a token away. Um, in this case, in this year, you get points for how many precision tokens you have left. So this is the part that I've said before kind of scares me. It, it might cause a team to just sit there in base with, even if they had you know, tons of time left and just sit there and say, hey guys, well, let's just take our 60 points. Especially if the points that they would do a mission for don't add up to 60. I don't know. It just kind of bugs me to watch a team sit there and, you know, when they would have other missions they could complete, but that's just the way it goes. So here's the scoring for these pre uh, precision tokens. If your team does not use up any of your precision tokens, then your team would get 60 points added to your robot game score. If the ref took away one, then your team would get 45 points. If the ref took away two, then your team would get 30 points. If the ref takes three away, then your team would get 20 points. If the ref takes four away, your team would have 10 points. And if your team has one token left, you would get five points. And obviously, if they have to take that one away, then your team gets nothing for their precision tokens. So you guys can leave me a comment in the comments section how you feel about these precision tokens. Um, case in point, let's say your team was going to do this swing mission. It's only worth 20 points. So if a team was having an issue where they're like, and the robots, you know, not coming quite back to base, then the team might decide, well, shoot, you know, do we just sit on the robot, don't do anything because the 20 points that we might get from this mission is not the points, you know, equal to how many they would get from having their precision tokens left. 
So it's going to be one of those things where you strategize and you, you talk about this with your team and you just go through a scenario going, okay, there's 30 seconds left. We have this mission left to do. You know, we have so many precision tokens left. What, what is the smart thing to do? And, you know, you know me, I'm always big, a big fan of saying, you know, run this, run the robot until, you know, you can't run it anymore. But then again, that's when the precision tokens come into play where maybe now you don't go gung ho and you kind of wait and say, maybe let's just not touch the robot. So it is what it is. Okay, guys, so there you have it. The City Shaper missions and points video. Um, I hope I did a good job of explaining things. Um, and there are obviously some things I wasn't quite sure about. So there's where you guys can come in and help. Like the bridge, you know, what is considered supported? Is it on the slant? Is it on the level part? Um, the tree, you know, is a unit each blue cube or is a unit just a single entity of itself? So there's some things I'm still not 100% sure about. So take what you can and go, yes, okay, I understand that. And, you know, I guess we'll have to dive a little deeper, check the updates on the first site for any kind of clarification on the rules. But other than that, let's go to it. Let's have some fun. Let's figure out, you know, have your team strategize, um, build the robot according to the missions and, you know, the programming. Uh, what does the robot need to do in order to, successfully accomplish a mission and then yeah it's just it's all fun it's all good okay guys so hopefully you guys um found this informative um you can kind of now look at the board and figure out what's good what's not good to attempt as a team let's take it from there okay guys